What's up, YouTube? I'm back at it. I'm making another video about an application I was put on to um, called Tegrack Overclock Ultimate. The free version and the paid version in the market, Tegrack Overclock and uh, Tegrack Overclock Ultimate. I got the ultimate version for one and nine because of the extra features. Uh, Shouts out to QB King 77 of the XDA Developers Forum for putting me on to the application with a uh, EG22 installation video demonstration he was doing. Um, this app is compatible with only Samsung phones because of the kernels. Um, Samsung, uh, the lower end models, the mid range models, all the way up to the Samsung Galaxy S2. Um, I have the Samsung Epic 4G, as most of you know. Um, I have my phone pushed to 1.5 gigahertz comfortably, no force closes, no freeze ups. No data loss. Uh, make sure if you're gonna do anything like this for you rookie users. I know the experience fans don't need to hear this, but um, make sure you do a main Android backup, which is a backup of all your data and clock with my recovery. Because if you're playing with the voltages in your phone and you undervolt it too much, you will lose data. It has happened to me before. It has happened to me before. Uh, I had an Android backup, so everything was good. So um, right now I'm going to get into the application, show you some of the features. Um, first setting you have is optimization, which is where you can go in and adjust uh, voltage, internal, and core voltages at each step uh, that's been uh, activated in the kernel. This, in this situation, I have Genocide Kernel 2.0, which is where it's overclocked to 1.4 megahertz with four steps installed above the stock speed of one gigahertz so those above a thousand are the ones that you're allowed to play with so I'm going to show you this real quick and um, here's the CPU max frequency setting you can go in and I uh, said it's very dangerous you want to continue to say yes 1.3 is the max that lets you push the stock kernel that's pretty good speed uh, here have different profiles that I've set up. Say this, you know what I'm saying? You can see those. Um, at the scaling, when you're overclocking, you can turn it up or down just based on the situation. If your battery's low, you don't feel like using all 1.3 or 1.5 gigahertz. You can uh, play with that. It has different tweaks. Um, I haven't found where you can get tweaks yet. If anybody knows, uh, let me know. I think it's only the uh, input output scheduler, which to me really doesn't affect it that much. Now, um, in order to get it stable at 1.5 gigahertz, what I did was take the stock uh, voltages, take the stock speeds in the kernel, which above 1 gigahertz were 1120 megahertz, 1200 megahertz, uh, 1300 megahertz, and 1400 megahertz. This is the 1.4 gigs. Now, I, I changed starting with. Um, 1200 megahertz. I pushed that up a tad bit up to 1252. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. 1252, you can see frequency. The next step, which was 1300, I pushed to 1400 megahertz. And I did have to up the core voltage from 1325 mini volts to 1350 mini volts, which gave me stability. And the last step at 1.4 gigahertz, I pushed to 1.5 gigahertz. I haven't tried to go any higher than 1.5. I tried to do 1.6 off the rip. It froze instantly. Couldn't even get out of the application. I had to do a battery pull, so I don't know if we can play around with that. I might try 1.55 though, just to just you know, I'm feeling myself. Uh, but as stable 1.5 again, no force closure, no freeze ups. I did have to push up the voltage from 1375 mini volts. To 1400 mini volts, which is giving me beautiful performance, uh, some good scores. Uh, I, didn't, I've been playing games all day. Uh, I got Ash 6, Gun Brothers, um, Gun Bros, uh, Angry Birds, everything runs smoothly, everything runs beautifully. So, um, again, the settings I've had with uh, beautiful stability are 1200 megahertz. Uh, 1252 megahertz, 14 and 1500 megahertz. Um, now you might ask, when you overclock, does it eat your battery up? Yes, it does. But the good thing about this application is you can use it 
with um, set CPU. Got a little black beauty right there. You know, black is beautiful. Please, no bullshit ass comments about that. I said, I don't want to hear that bullshit. Just keep moving up my channel if you don't like. I mean, that's my personal shit. But anyway, you can use this right alongside uh, set CPU. As you can see right there, 1.5. I'm just going to push it to 1.5. You can see 1500 megahertz right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, nah, as far as saving battery, what you can do, the beautiful thing about set CPU is it has different profile settings that uh, allow you to use the phone when you want to actually use that performance and turn it off when you don't. So I have a screen off profile here that sets the maximum uh, megahertz to 600 while the screen is off. I have another one that when the phone's temperature goes higher than 47.4 degrees Celsius, it drops it down to 600 uh, megahertz max. Uh, when I'm on the phone and call, 600 megahertz max, uh, only time I have it running at the full 1.5 gigs is when it's on the charger and when I'm above 51%. Uh, when I drop below 51% battery life, it uh, simmers down to 1120 uh, megahertz. And then when I drop below 26%, uh, it only runs at 800 megahertz. Just in case I'm out, I don't want to be running my phone at 1.5, running the battery when I might need my phone, uh, when I'm out and about, away from my charger. So with that, uh, when you turn your screen off, again, uh, it only uses a maximum speed of 600 megahertz, which saves you a lot of battery life. As you can see, I still got the uh, the Yobi 2800 extended battery. Still doing good life. It has toned down a little bit. Those of you who are wondering, now I'm only getting about uh, 24 hours. I used to get about two and a half. Now I'm only getting 24. I'm lucky to get 30, but it's still pretty good. Um, I don't have to charge twice in one day at, at, at ever. So to me, that's still a pretty good look. I'm saying um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna do a quick benchmark test. I'm gonna push this to 1. Point, to 1.5 megahertz. And I'm gonna do link pack. Do link pack real quick. Uh, base uh, Samsung F4G gets 17s and 18s. I'm getting 25.676, and 25.803, so 25s and 26 is at 1.5 gigahertz. I have not pushed it any higher because I don't want to push the voltages too much higher than that. So um, that's that. Um, any questions, comments, uh, inbox me or comment right on the video. I try to help you out if you're new, if you're green with it, inbox me. I give you the instructions. I give you some links to uh, the explanation of XDA developers. They're real helpful over there. So again, this was uh, TechRack Overclock Ultimate. Uh, running on the Samsung Epic 4G um, and that's a wrap uh, also day-to-day -day use if you're not worried about the, uh, the performance scores my scrolling is beautifully smooth zero lag everything runs you know perfect mm -hmm. so um, it, it actually does improve performance real smooth uh, I mean so that's a good look uh, that's another one so um know what to do. Deuces.